Right, hi, I'm Claire Coughlin, I'm a Kennel Club member, I'm also an obedience judge and steward um, and I'm fortunate to be the obedience team leader here for the dog activities every year. Um, just to give you a bit of history of obedience, it started in the 1950s as a competitive sport and it was developed really from working trials, from sheepdog trials and a mixture of the two really, but it became in its own right really in the 1950s. Um, so there's a series of exercises that you have to do to compete with obedience. And we've got a dog here today, we've got um, Sean, the handler, and this is Tally, who's a working sheepdog, or otherwise known as a border collie. And he's just doing some focus work there, if you have a look. He's just focusing on getting the dog to watch him, which is really important in obedience. You have to have the dog focused on you to enable you to do the exercise. So if you have a look there, he's just doing a couple of steps with the dog. This is the beginning of something called heel work, which is one of the key elements of obedience. So if we have a look at a little circle now, I'm going to do a circle, Sean, of obedience. There we are. Heel work. You see the tail's wagging because the dogs really enjoy obedience work, heel work. There we go. He's doing a straight section now. So there's lots of turns involved, um, straight sections. You might be asked to do diagonal turns. When you get more advanced, you would work your dog off the lead in this exercise as well. Um, there's also some paces of heel work involved. If we do some slow pace now for us, Sean. Okay, so with slow pace, you just have to, it has to look slower than the original pace that we just saw. If you notice there, the dog's still got to be accurate in its work. Okay, then if we go back to normal, when you get higher up the levels, you can't speak as much as in the lower levels. If you do some first pace now, so he comes back this way and he's doing first pace, which is the other pace involved. So that's heel work really. Then if we move on to another exercise, can you show us how you would train a position on the move now, Sean? So this is also at the higher level of, of heel work. You would have something called a position on the move where the dog has to negotiate sit, stand and down positions during a stretch of heel work. So if we have a look now, the dog is in the down, he's being shown that he's got to lie down and then he's got to wait there now until he's collected back into heel work. There we are, now you see he's given a command and then he's brought back into the heel work position. So now this time he's doing the sit. You notice the use of a hand signal there just to encourage the dog. Okay, and then he's collected into heel work. That's lovely. So another thing we would find, um, Sean, another thing we would find is DC. So when we're doing this exercise, this stands for distance control, but it's commonly known as DC. You notice he's using a toy there to give the dog some encouragement. So again, the dog has to negotiate sit, stand and down positions. Normally, this would be quite a length between the dog and handler, um, but obviously we're training the exercise at the moment, so we're quite close to the dog. You notice there again the hand signals are being used just to encourage the dog, and he's constantly looking for the toy and the reward, because that's how we train, we play and motivate the dog. Okay, and then he gets, once he's done that, he gets his toy as a reward. Okay, so that's that. And then the other thing we would do is a retrieve exercise. Retrieve. So if he uses his toy there, just to show you. Okay, Sean, you might have to turn around so we can see you. Okay, so he's gonna set the dog up now. The dog's got to sit and wait there. And then the article is thrown out. There we are. And then the dog is sent out to fetch the article. And then he's brought back into the handler. And then he's got to hold that article until told otherwise and then every exercise is finished off with a finish like that. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of some of the more advanced work of competition. But we're going to show you a lovely little Staffordshire Bull Terrier now with a young handler who's only 12 years old and she's just learning the basics of obedience. Um, she comes to my club, so that's what's coming up. So this is Lauren now, she's 12 years old, she's one of our young handlers, she comes along to my training club. She's only been training for a year but she's got a lovely little Staffordshire Bull Terrier called Ruby. 
I'm just going to show you some of the basics of how we would achieve the exercises in obedience. So here's Lauren and Ruby. And as you can see, she's got a nice toy with her there just to encourage the dog. And she's also got some food treats. Ruby loves sausage, so that's what we use for training. So as you can see now, we're practicing the watch exercise. So this is really important to build the dog's attention on you and get a really good bond with your dog is to practice that and then once we've got the dog watching us like that then we would give the food. So give you food now Lauren. That's lovely. Okay so then once we've done that we would work on getting some circles with the dog. So this is again trying to get the dog focused on you. There we are. And then we go round using the food and the toy. There we go and we've got the dog looking up at us. Normally we would have more space in a bigger ring to do this but this is the general idea. And then we get the dog into a sit, but again, notice the attention. And then again, the dog gets some food afterwards. So then we would build that up from a circle into doing the stretches of heel work that you saw earlier. Um, the other thing we would teach a young dog is a recall and how to come back to you, which is really important when you first have a dog. So Lauren, if you want to walk down that way with your dog, okay, so she's gonna walk along with the dog and then recall, she's gonna call the dog back to her. That's it, with a nice happy voice, using the food, and then give the treat. And that was how, how we would start off a recall with a dog. Um, the other thing we would teach a young dog is a stay exercise, really important around the house as well. So if you get your dog into a sit position, Lauren, so we're into the sit, we've got the food there, or oh, she's just gonna have a little scratch. Dogs are dogs. <laughs> okay, then into the sit position. So again, we want to just make sure that she's looking at us. There we are. And then on the lead, we would just take a couple of steps away, making sure we've still got the food. Okay. And then we would just occasionally just remind the dog to sit. There we are. Then we would go back to her and give her some praise after that. That's good. And then we would then encourage the dog to lie down. That's it. So again, we're using the food. There we go. Into the down and using the food in front of the dog's nose there to just get the down position. That's good, and then praise your dog, Lauren. Well done. So that's a general idea of the, of the basics of how we would start off, really. Um, and any dog can have a go at obedience. You don't have to have a pedigree. There's lots of crossbreeds that do very well in obedience. It's for all ages as well. As you can see, Lauren's one of our young handlers, but we have people in their 80s competing in obedience. It's all about having fun and just having a go really.